Nancy Trout near Woodham, Ontario. And thank you, Robert, for having us here. Oh, you're very welcome. Nice to have you here. Yes, and today you're going to tell us all about your your work with bonsai plants. Absolutely. I think, uh, well, I've been doing bonsai trees ever since I was a little kid. I started off probably about nine years old trying to grow maple trees in an acorn and uh, not having a whole lot of success with that. And so uh, I even tried growing maple trees in a half a grapefruit. And, you know, there wasn't a whole lot known about bonsai trees at that time, especially a little kid, 11 years old, really didn't know a whole lot. And the thinking there was you grow your tree in a grapefruit and any of the roots that come out, grow outside the grapefruit, you prune those off and that's how you kept the tree small. Well, the fruit flies took over and my experiment oh, no. with the bonsai trees and the grapefruit got thrown out <laughs> by my mother who wasn't a big fan of fruit flies. So that didn't really work out too well. But then as I got older and uh, actually got to have more information about bonsai trees and actually then there was more uh, stock, plant stock that was suitable for growing bonsai trees available as well. I finally got some trees like junipers and that sort of thing that were meant for uh, growing in bonsai pots. And so uh, I had a lot better luck with that. And that would have probably been about 1975 or so I started growing trees seriously. Okay, I thought maybe what we could do is start off by uh, just discussing what makes a bonsai tree and just uh, you know, some of the basic uh, cultural aspects of them. First of all, any woody plant can be grown into a bonsai tree. So that can be anything that's a shrub, a tree, um, something that will uh, make uh, a woody stem, a root system, and some leaves can probably be trained to be a bonsai tree. But the main characteristics of them are, first of all, a pot that is big enough for the tree to grow in over a, a summer and develop a good healthy root system. That root system is a key part of the whole tree and having a nice spreading root system on a tree uh, gives it a feeling of stability. It makes the tree uh, look real and it, it also adds to the age or the, the look of a tree that makes it look older. You want to have a fairly good trunk on a tree, something that has uh, some shape to it, some interest, and usually the bark comes into play there. And just how the branches are attached as well is uh, an important part of the tree too. All bonsai trees have a front, they have sides, and they have a back. So there is always a front of the tree that is uh, where you should be looking at the tree from if when it's on display. So they you always want to have uh, a branch, a low branch on the one side, then another branch a little bit higher up called the second branch. And generally you want to have a third branch at the back that gives you some depth to the tree as well. So there you can see the first branch here and the second branch and then the third branch here at the back. And then as you get closer to the top of the tree, you want to have a more fine uh, branching and some what's called ramification. And there you can sort of see what I mean by that, these clouds of foliage on the tree that uh, make it look, again, like a real tree. One of the first things we should talk about is a bonsai pot. What makes a bonsai pot? They can be either unglazed, such as this pot, or glazed, such as this. But generally speaking, all bonsai pots will not be glazed on the inside. So they will be just basic clay. And another characteristic of them is they have quite large drainage holes because you want that soil to be well drained. I usually put a mosquito screen in the bottom of the holes and then um, I use wire, copper wire in this case, to actually wire the tree into the pot. After it's pruned in springtime, uh, there's not a large amount of roots in there to hold that tree in the pot and so it just helps to keep the tree stable until it develops uh, newer roots into that new soil. And the wire screening, Robert, is that to yeah. keep the soil from draining out? It's to keep the soil from draining out and also from insects from getting in. Uh, earwigs, sow bugs love to uh, yeah. get in those drainage holes and eat roots. Mm. So uh, it helps to keep the uh, um, 
insects from getting in there as well. Although uh, I have had ants living in my pots as well. And that usually uh, causes problems when you bring them in the house. There's uh, other d different types of pots depending on the style of tree that you have. This is a pot that's good for a cascading tree. In other words, a tree that comes out and hangs down below the level of the pot. And so a nice tall pot helps to make a cascading tree look that much better. Oh, nice. Yeah, and they can be uh, decorated or plain. Now a little bit about the tools that I use. There's nothing real fancy uh, about the tools that I use. Basic uh, pruning, uh, pruners. I have these little sort of needle nose type pruners for getting into tight places and pruning off uh, new growth and that sort of thing. Uh, for working with wire, I use wire cutters and uh, needle nose pliers. For some of the major pruning, uh, these are actual bonsai tools. Uh, a straight cutter, which can cut through uh, pretty major sized pieces of wood branches. And this is called a knob cutter. It actually will cut a dish shape so that it's easier for the tree to heal oh. as you, once you pruned okay. it up. If you leave a stub, it's hard for a branch to actually heal that over, right? Okay. But if you make a bit of a recess when you cut it off, it's easier for the new tissue to grow over that, uh, that space. Oh, so that's where that comes in. I also, uh, the repotting in springtime, uh, I use uh, well, it's an old ice pick for teasing out roots. And then just a pair of uh, Chinese scissors for pruning roots. Uh, before you uh, repot them in springtime. And just while we're talking about things that I use, I also uh, use fertilizer as well, liquid fertilizer, at about a half the rate that it calls for on the label. So uh, I usually use that every time I water while the trees are growing. You only fertilize while they're actively growing, eh? Oh, okay. Yeah, they don't need nutrients if they're not growing. So generally in spring and uh, then sort of wean them off the fertilizer in uh, the summertime. And then sometimes I fertilize them a little bit in the fall with a higher uh, phosphorus and potash fertilizer to get them through the winter, to strengthen the roots and, okay. and make them more winter hardy. But yeah, it's important to fertilize them because actually some people think, um, you know, these trees uh, don't grow. Well, actually to be healthy, they have to grow. And in springtime, you let them grow and then prune them back. And then if they have another flush of growth, you let them grow and then prune them back. Okay. So it's important for the health and also uh, to help make them more branching and bushier. Every time you prune it off, it stimulates the buds to grow and you wind up with a fuller, thicker foliage on the tree. Okay, so I uh, grow a lot of different kinds of trees as bonsai trees. And uh, this is an example of a, uh, a maple, this is an Amur maple that uh, I think is more native to Europe, England, that sort of area. But um, one of the nice features of this kind of tree is that it has relatively small leaves. Because when you're growing a small tree, you want to grow something that has relatively small leaves so that they're in proportion to the actual tree. That makes sense. And that's where these Amur maples come in. This is another one here. And uh, they, they have a really nice uh, root system and generally what I've done to grow these trees. I've grown them for a number of years out in the garden until they got big enough and thick enough and then prune them back and basically grow them up in the garden for five or six years until they get big enough that I can pot them up okay. and they and they look like a tree. So, and and, and are they a, a slower growing maple as well? Or? Yeah they actually are relatively slow growing as you can see just you know they grow uh, fairly short inner nodes which is nice too this inner node they're in between the, the nodes, and the shorter you can get that to be, then the fuller the tree will look. Oh, you don't want something right. that grows great long stems between the, the uh, nodes, because uh, then it looks long and lanky, you know? So you want them to be short and compact. Okay. So throughout the spring and summer, I generally uh, prune these trees, say, about once a week. And there again, the idea being, follow the basic pruning principles. Uh, anything that branch that crosses over or that's diseased or broken you prune those out but then you have to look each time that you're pruning 
to see uh, which direction do you want that new growth to go in. Because if you prune to a bud that faces outwardly, that branch is going to grow out. If you prune to a, a, a branch or a bud that's facing in, then it will grow in. So obviously when you're pruning these trees, you want everything to grow out. So you prune to an outward facing bud okay. so that it will spread, the branches will spread out. These are fig trees and uh, they're tropical trees. So uh, even though they're tropical trees and like to be uh, you know, relatively uh, warm, um, I still put them outside in the, in the summertime. They like to be outside. And uh, you can see that there's all kinds of new growth on those trees and uh, they quite enjoy being outside and they have developed well. They have nice root system, look relatively stable and some of them uh, have kind of odd shapes. This one here is a bit of a, uh, a different looking tree that, um, yeah, I kind of like it just because it is different. These two trees are Chinese elms and this tree is a good example of, uh, well, just whether a tree looks better from this being the front or whether it looks better this being the front. And this is the kind of thing uh, that I agonize over quite often as well as things like, you know, which branch to prune off because, uh, you know, obviously once you've pruned a branch off a tree, it's not going to grow back and you can't put it back on. So it right. takes a lot of con contemplation <laughs> before you start pruning off a branch. But this is a, a question I ask people when I uh, do presentations is, which looks better f as a front of the tree? Does it, do you like that better as a front? Or do you like this better as the front? Mm. Yeah. There's a lot of people that That's like, hard. yeah, there's a lot of people that like this as a front because uh, it shows a, you know, a nice thick foliage. It looks full. And uh, I don't know, a lot of times I think I like this better as the front because it shows a little better that ramification of, uh, you know, the clouds of leaves on, on a, the branches and it gives you a little bit better view of the trunk and just a little better delineation of, you know, the branches and, and just how they look. You can probably see this branch right here. Uh, you want the, these branches to be growing out relatively flat or even slightly downwards. So this branch is totally uh, in the wrong spot. So if, I, if I'm to prune that off, I'd probably prune that back to this small branch here that's facing in the direction that I want it to go. Take that off, and there you can see that now I'm starting to get that little better look from the foliage. A little bit flatter. Sometimes you even have to prune off some leaves. There, now you can see that, that gap there. Yeah. Uh, it, again, it makes it look more like a branch, like a cloud, yeah. yeah. And there's an old saying that the Japanese uh, bonsai growers use is that you have to leave space for the birds to fly through. Mm. And uh, that's more of a, the Japanese style for, uh, of pruning, where it's more open. And uh, again, you can see that ramification. And this, this side is more the Chinese style, where you have the thicker, fuller, Okay. Uh, looking branches without, you know, quite so much of that that ramification. You look like a bonsai. You're trying to make your bonsai look like a tree. Mm. Okay? And so if you look at trees in nature, you'll notice that older trees have branches, especially lower branches, that hang down as opposed to growing up mm -hmm. the way that, uh, you know, young trees grow. And so like a tree like this, I actually originally wired these branches down because they wanted to grow straight up. Same with the branches, lower branches on this tree. I wired them down so that they would be more horizontal or even a little bit lower than that okay. to make them look older. Okay, so one of the most important times of the year when you're growing bonsai trees is in springtime. And that's when you do things like uh, root pruning and uh, you know repotting and that sort of thing. And it's quite important to do that right as the buds start to break on whatever tree it might be. And some break earlier than others, like maples are usually out first. Trees like this juniper are one of the later trees to start to grow. But as soon as they start growing, it's time to either repot 
or uh, root prune and, and put it in a pot if it's been uh, wintering out in the garden sort of thing. And so what I do basically is take the entire root ball and tease out all those roots that probably, you know, this is going to be close to being root bound by the end of summer. And some of those roots are going to be wrapping around inside the pot. And it's really not a healthy condition for that tree to be in because uh, those fine root hairs that are at the end of each one of those roots isn't really in soil. And so uh, the tree will actually suffer if it's left like that. So in springtime, you take the uh, tree right out of the pot and tease out all the roots. And then I generally prune them off using uh, those um, scissors and leave about, uh, oh, in, this, in the case of this one, I probably leave about three quarters to an inch of space between the pruned off roots and the pot for fresh soil to go in all the way around and underneath the roots as well so they have fresh soil to grow into. And everywhere that you've pruned off those roots, they'll send out a whole bunch of new little rootlets and at the end of each one of those is the root hairs that feed and, uh, and nurse the tree. So it's actually uh, healthier for the tree to be pruned like that so that it has those fine fibrous roots that are able to uh, to feed and, and water the tree and keep it healthy. And as you can see, like when they have that root uh, being able to grow into good fresh soil, then uh, they will put out lots of new growth and uh, that's exactly what you want. So uh, that's usually in, in springtime. And uh, quite often, uh, yeah, when, it's, when things are ready to repot, um, I'm sometimes up until 3, 4 o'clock in the morning doing the, uh, the repotting thing because it's critical that as soon as they start to grow that you do that, uh, that pruning because uh, the exuberance of spring, these trees want to grow so badly that you can pretty nearly do anything to that root system and that tree's still going to grow because they're just so keen to grow in, in springtime. And it helps uh, reduce the uh, shock as well to the tree because with any of these ones that lose their leaves in the fall and springtime they have no leaves on them and so that root system is going to still be in balance with the top of the tree if uh, you prune some of it off it's not going to stress the tree at all because at that time there's uh, really relatively little on the top to uh, support. These junipers generally uh, they have a relatively small root system to begin with and a lot of times you don't even really need to prune off a whole lot of them. This is a uh, uh, juniper, Juniperus procumbens nana, it's called uh, Japanese uh, juniper, and it's uh, the nana part means dwarf, so it's sort of a dwarf variety that uh, doesn't really get big to begin with, and part of the reason why it is a dwarf type tree is because it has a relatively small, weak root system that doesn't feed the tree, you know, large amounts of water and nutrients, so it stays relatively small to begin with. Okay. Yeah. And is there a certain type of soil that you need to use? Well, yeah, everybody has sort of uh, their own idea, I think, about what the uh, bonsai soil should be like. A lot of things that you read, they talk about um, uh, using soil that has large granules and uh, that sort of thing so that it's well drained. But I, I find that uh, with that kind of soil, generally trees dry out too quickly. Like I have to water these trees on days when it's sunny, warm, uh, particularly if it's been windy. Yeah, I have to water these trees every day. So I water them every morning. Um, if it's rained or, uh, you know, if it's been cloudy, uh, cool, you might be able to, do, to water them like every other day. Okay. But uh, generally speaking, I water these trees uh, every day. And I found that if I have too open and too porous of a soil, they actually start drying out, you know, by the end of the day and they don't even get through an entire day. So, uh, yeah, I usually um, use a combination of uh, perlite, vermiculite, um, sometimes uh, co the coconut chunks, uh, bark. I make my own leaf mold from the uh, locust leaves that we have here. I put that in for oh, organic yeah. matter, earthworm castings. I use that in the soil for, um, you know, fertilizer for a little bit long, long term fertilizer. Um, sand or sometimes, uh, you know, relatively small gravelly type uh, soil as well in there for some drainage and substance and uh, sometimes even some potting soil depending on the type of tree. So some, some trees like these junipers like to have a little bit better um, drainage and aeration than some of the others like these particular trees here, especially the fig trees, they can just grow in straight potting soil. Okay. And so uh, I mix in, you know, the vermiculite, the perlite and that sort of thing. Sometimes I use a, a product called Turface, which is a kind of like clay pellets 
uh, fired clay so they don't break down, but they oh. do absorb some moisture. Okay. Yeah, and they help to give some substance to the soil as well. Eh? So, uh, yeah, I make up mixtures depending on the type of tree that I'm actually repotting. I kind of custom make them up as, uh, as I go away. Eh? A lot of times I will also put in uh, some of these uh, pine needles. I chop them up and uh, mix them in as well because uh, they help not only to get, give organic matter in that, but they also acidify the soil a little bit as well, which uh, when you have water like ours, pH 8.2, most trees, most plants like soil to be either neutral or slightly acidic. And so it doesn't hurt to have some pine needles in there to, to counter that, uh, that pH of uh, our water for watering them. I also water with rainwater, of course, when, it, when I have it. So, uh, yeah, that should be neutral or, or close to it anyways, okay. pH. Yeah. Okay, so these are some of my other trees that I have potted up. These two trees are called Compestrum maple, and again, they're trees that uh, I think are native more to Europe, England, than they are to here, although they do grow here, as you can see. Um, but uh, they, again, have the small leaves that are more in proportion to uh, the uh, size of the bonsai tree. Eh? And this, this tree in particular is a good one to look at where I was talking about before the first branch. There you have the first branch. There the second branch. And this one in behind here is uh, the third branch. And so you can see what I've tried to do with these. Older branches on trees generally tend to hang down. And so I've wired these trees initially so that these branches hang down but then as I prune them I generally try to prune them uh, back to buds or branches that face downwards as well and just have a nice sort of full foliage on the top and yet um, you know the branches themselves uh, grow in more of a downward fashion. This back branch is a good example of what I've been trying to do with these trees there you can see the new growth from this uh, summer and I had those wired down as well so that they would face in a downward direction and someday um, perhaps uh, when I put these out in the garden for winter I'll prune these back but for the time being I'm just letting them grow because that helps to thicken up the wood as well the more a tree grows you get more girth on the branches or the trunk and that's how you uh, get a nice large trunk on a tree like you can see on this one quite a large trunk in relation to the size of the tree and, that, and that's how you do that you let it grow and then prune it back so. And, and the side piece down, is that root coming This one the here, side? yep. Yeah. Yep. That would be considered root rather than trunk. It is a root, yep. Okay. And the, the rest of these roots here too, yep. Now, uh, as I repot these trees, a lot of times I raise them up in the pot by taking the soil away from the roots and they raise the tree up oh, in the pot, you see. Okay. So it more displays the uh, root system of the tree. Now, at one point I was, that's why I got this bark here. I was toying with the idea of filling that in with soil and moss and to well, make it look maybe like it's more of the whole root mass if you like. But I, I don't know, there, I, I sort of like, as you can probably tell from these trees, I sort of like the exposed root, the look of the exposed roots. One of the, one of the things that uh, the old bonsai trees originally, when they first started collecting them from the mountains, uh, they were trees that had suffered you know, from wind, from snow, from ice. And so a lot of times uh, those trees were pretty beat up looking. And that's what uh, they tried to imitate with bonsai trees was trees that were sort of growing in harsh conditions, okay. you know. And part of that was a root system that, you know, was exposed and that sort of thing. Now these trees aren't uh, look like they have been growing in uh, rough conditions, but I still like to see the roots and it kind of gives the tree a look of, of stability as well, I think. You know, it's, it's a matter of uh, um, sort of your preference. And that, that's one thing about growing these trees is that, you know, everyone has their own idea of what looks aesthetically pleasing. And so with when you grow your own trees, you can make them look uh, however you like, you know. And that's, that's part of the reason why I have this tree uh, growing the way it is with these low sweeping branches, because I, I like that look. It sort of, um, well, it looks like a like a person, you know, with nice flowing hair, sort of yes, thing. Yes, it does. Like a, Very yeah. sculptural. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what I'm sort of going for, eh? Mm -hmm. So it, even in the summertime, uh, these trees will put out new growth. 
as you can see here. And so, uh, again, in summertime, you, I constantly have to, uh, you know, prune to keep these trees in, in shape and design. So I prune back to uh, nodes that are facing the right direction for I want the branch to grow, generally, again, down. And so uh, I pick nodes that are have buds that are facing downwards or sometimes like on these ones they'll have two buds and uh, I may even rub the one off that uh, is facing upwards and uh, just let the one that's growing downwards to develop and I think on one of these trees there it is right there here you can see here's a branch that's growing up and here's another one that's growing down and so when I prune that I'll prune that off so that the branch that's facing down is the one that I leave and that way as that branch develops it will look older again because it's facing downwards instead of growing upwards now a lot of times bonsai growers will wire branches into place and I have done that with some trees but this is generally how I uh, wire a tree you can see some of them here that uh, basically uh, they're just it's just a wire with um, two hooks in the end and uh, wrap it around something like the root and then just wire that branch down into the position that I want. I also use wires to wire them you know closer to the trunk or further away from the trunk or just however you want those branches to be placed and uh, yeah I, uh, I shape my trees basically like that by pruning and a little bit of wiring just to hold branches uh, in the spot where I want them to, uh, to develop. Now this tree is an Amir maple, same as the two that were up on the deck, except that this one's been uh, potted up and trained for about uh, two years longer than uh, the other ones. And as you can see, it's got a nice, it's got a nice trunk, a nice uh, root system, and what with uh, the pinching and pruning, and regrowth over those years. It's given this uh, tree quite a bit fuller uh, foliage on the top. And a lot looks a lot thicker and uh, gives it a nicer overall look. I could go in there and usually in springtime I do, um, you know, prune for shape. And it's easier at that time of year because there's no leaves on them then, and you can actually see the framework of the tree much much more easily. And uh, that's when I do the major sort of pruning and. I think this guy here probably next spring is going to get a major prune to open it up some more. Like it's okay to have it nice and, and thick like this, I, uh, it's the way I want it to be right now. But I think what I'll do in springtime is I'll try and open it up so that you can see the branches better. You can't hardly see the trunk or the roots on this tree right now and they're, they're uh, an important part of the overall look of the tree so I'm going to open that up so you can see it better. and then. Uh, yeah, open it up so that you can see the branch structure a little better as well. And now that I have uh, lots of branches to work with, it should be a little bit easier to uh, do that. I just I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this juniper here, first of all. I don't know, even uh, bonsai trees have pests. Um, I sp have sprayed these trees with um, BT for the gypsy moths and that sort of thing, because they tent caterpillars love eating these trees as well as any, like any yeah. other kind of maple. Um, I actually sometimes even have problems with birds. And for some reason, the birds decided to uh, um, pick the soil out of this pot and I had to put a wire mesh on it to stop them from doing it. But this particular tree was out in the garden for years. And I couldn't really decide what I wanted to do with this tree, how I wanted to train it, because it had a branch that sort of came out and was off on a weird angle, never really looked right. I never was sure just how I should wire it or how I wanted to wire it to make it look, um, you know, art, artistic or at least something that was pleasing to look at. It kind of was just, uh, you know, sort of a weird looking tree. So this spring, when I was potting it up, I decided I'm going to make this tree look like something finally it's about time. And I started toying with, okay, what if I put this branch down here? What if I put it up here? And all of a sudden, snap, that branch broke off. <laughs> Made your decision There's where it was. You. And actually, yeah, I, after a momentary, oh crap, sort of thing, um, I, I looked at it and I thought, you know, that 
that actually doesn't look that bad with that branch gone there, you know? <laughs> it actually looks pretty darn good. Yeah. So it didn't have much, this is another one of those uh, Procumbens nana, dwarf, and so it actually has a very small root system on it, and the majority of it was all on the one side, so that's why you see it potted off kind of on a weird angle here. And actually, if I look at this tree, it probably looks better from an angle like that. You know, it exposes the trunk a little bit more. You can see the branch structure a little bit as opposed to the way it's potted up like this. Okay. So next time I pot it up, I'll likely do it uh, on a little bit more of an angle like that just to show uh, the, uh, the trunk. Some people don't like moss on the, on the trunks of their trees. These trunks on these uh, junipers are relatively small to start with anyways. So anything that can make them look bigger, I figure is a good thing. So oh. I, I, I've let the moss grow. And it also even has lichens growing on it, that sort of thing, which adds a little bit to, you know, the age, the look of the tree. Yes. And this is more, you know, one of those kind of trees that looks like it's been beat up a little bit on the side of a mountain, you know? It yes. hasn't, hasn't been pampered like these mm -hmm. other ones out in full sun and beautiful growing conditions all the time. So I, I think eventually this tree is going to make a fantastic looking little uh, bonsai tree. And all it took was for me to break a branch off it by mistake. And that, <laughs> that actually, I, I think, is... I'm not bad looking the way it is right now. Yeah, so I'm pretty great. happy with that. And so how old are some of these trees? Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's hard for me to tell exactly how old they are because some of them I've, I've purchased like this one, but I'd be willing to bet that tree right there is probably at least 50 years old. The one beside it, I would say, is probably at least 40 years old. Really? Um, yeah, this one here, again, is probably you know, more like about 15 years old. Um, it's hard to tell the ages of them just by looking at them because of the way they, you can grow them like with these uh, trees in particular. See, I, I bought those two trees. This one here I've grown, I grew this one actually from a, from a cutting out in the garden for a number of years. I just let it grow. I, I treat them exactly the same as I would for any bonsai tree that's in a pot. I dig them up in springtime. I prune the roots like you normally would. I prune the top, put them in the garden and let them grow there over the summertime. And I prune them when they're out in the garden as well. So if they get, once they get that big flush of spring growth uh, over with, I uh, prune them back and treat them exactly like I would a regular bonsai tree in a pot. But because they have unlimited growing space being out in the, in the garden, uh, they grow considerably more than they would if they were just growing in a pot. Right. And so then you really put on some thickness on the trunk and on the roots. And then when uh, I decided to, it was time to train it as a bonsai tree, I basically cut the top off of the uh, tree and only left about four inches on what had been a fairly good sized tree. Oh. And then let the shoots grow, pick out the ones you want to use for branches, okay. wire them in place, let them grow, prune them and do all those kinds of things. And that's how I grew that uh, particular tree as well as these uh, other amur maples that were up on the deck there. I grew them exactly the same way. Okay. So you have a nice sized trunk and a tree that's only, like I said, maybe 15 years old at the most. And uh, yeah, prune and, uh, and grow the top to uh, give you a nice top. And you've got already that nice trunk and root system established. And so then you can work on the top of the tree and make it look nice as well, instead of starting off with a tiny little uh, trunk and trying to make it thicker by just growing it in a pot. Right. So is there any advice you have on where to to get, say, a cutting of that kind of a tree to get started? Uh, yeah, I'm not even sure where I got these to begin with. I think I must have got them probably at a, uh, at a nursery. Um, I like them because, again, they have this, the proper sized leaves. Um, these two, like I said, I bought those two. Um, probably I've had them now for about 20 years, and uh, they didn't look anything like that when I bought them. <laughs> they were sort of, you know, uh, had been let grow a little bit wild, and uh, yeah, it took a bit to get them uh, under control and to actually get them um, pruned and growing in the in the way that I wanted them to to grow. So this is where. Uh, I grow the trees in the summertime and also uh, where they overwinter. So uh, this is a good example here of um, a tree that uh, doesn't really have leaves that are in the uh, right proportion for the tree. Like this is a sugar, these are sugar maples. 
actually I should show you this tree because it's kind of interesting. Here you can see uh, the various different trunks in here. And the way I started this tree off, as you can see it that well, but um, a friend of mine had a whole bunch of these sugar maple seedlings coming up in his garden. Probably had hundreds of them. And I asked him if it was all right if I took a few to make bonsai trees out of them. Oh yeah, help yourself. So I dug up about seven of them. I brought them home, sort of pruned the roots because they, they were just starting to grow. And uh, I twisted them together and put twist ties on the top and bottom just to hold them. And they, they were all twisted together. And I used each tree I used for a branch. So the first branch, the second branch, the third branch, and then a couple more out the top. So I trained each tree into a separate branch for the bonsai tree. So Robert, um, would you like to tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. Well, uh, I graduated from Beale in London. I was a city boy. I very soon when I was a kid got allergic to stop signs, uh, street lights, and could hardly wait to get out of the city. And so I figured working on a farm would be the best way to do that. So I did that for a couple of years. I worked on a horse farm. And uh, yeah, I didn't really think I was learning a whole lot about how to farm uh, doing that. And so I went to Centralia College and graduated from there in 1977. Got a job on a uh, dairy farm just outside of Kirkton here. And did that for five years. I worked milking cows and we also had like 700 acres of cash crops that I helped with as well. And when that job was finished, um, I went uh, back to the college and, uh, you know, looking for uh, another job. And it just so happened that uh, they needed someone to be an instructor for a soil management course for the uh, junior year. So I started doing that and ultimately taught about four different courses there, everything from fruit and vegetable production to conservation, woodlot management, that sort of thing did that as sort of a part-time job. I worked for the uh, Conservation Authority doing erosion control projects, agricultural erosion control, so grass, waterways, berms, those sorts of things, as well as uh, conservation tillage, no-till, ridge tillage, and uh, basically took equipment around to various farmers who were willing to try it, do test plots, and we worked on that for uh, about seven years until uh, I think people got used to the idea of no-till and where it might fit into their rotation, their cropping system, and that sort of thing. And as you know, it's um, being done a lot more around the country uh, than it uh, ever has been, you know, to the benefit of the soil and uh, the water as well, water quality. So um, I was also a drainage superintendent for a couple townships and uh, did various part-time jobs to, uh, yeah, earn a living. And... Uh, yeah, since I retired, I've basically been uh, working on uh, these bonsai trees as a vegetable garden. Um, I guess I figured if I couldn't earn money, I might as well stay home and save money. So I cut wood, I burned wood, I uh, did a lot of baking and as much as I could around here to uh, try and save a dollar and uh, have fun doing it. So uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing for about the last 10 years. And uh, I've really enjoyed the bonsai trees because now I've had some time that I could actually spend working on it and it's been a real pleasure uh, sharing it with you. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, no